Seasonic, the heart of your system. So this is the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, clearly 13-inch screen in a 2-in-1 form factor. Very thin and light as you can see, and this is actually running the Intel 10th gen iSlick Core i7 1065G7. So that G7 signifies higher end graphics. So pretty useful for a 2-in-1, depending on your workload. Interestingly, if I scroll down Task Manager, we can see 16 gigabytes in this configuration, though I believe more uh, memory is available if you want the specification. But this is 4266 megahertz LP DDR4X. So that really allows you to push the boundaries when it comes to memory capacity in a thin and light form factor like this. Interestingly, even though with 10th gen an emphasis is being put on Wi-Fi 6 or gigabit Wi-Fi, Dell is actually using a killer Wi-Fi 6 adapter, so the AX1650 adapter. So clearly Dell has, uh, shall we say, got its own thing going on with killer Wi-Fi rather than using the Intel chip. So we've been uh, left alone quietly and we are running Cinebench. So you can actually, wow, the clock speed. Okay, this is the first time I've seen that. I am actually quite impressed by that clock speed. That's 3.35 gigahertz all core Cinebench R20, so it might still be still within the PL1 or the PL2 power state, but that's actually not bad. Not bad at all. So I'm just going to minimize this in case somebody comes near. But yeah, okay, so now after however many seconds that is, we can work that out based on the graph, it's clocked down to 2.85 gigahertz, which to be fair, for a thin and light in a two-in-one form factor is not actually too bad for Cinebench R20. Uh, clearly the memory is spooling up quite heavily. Importantly here, the iGPU is not using. So depending on how that TDP is defined, whether it's package or cores only or cores plus and core, that will uh, limit the CPU performance boost or as far as clock speed goes. We're still running at 2.85 gigahertz, 2.7, 2.6. So it's clocked down to 2.6. So the base speed on this is 1.5, so we're still well above the base speed, which is pretty good to see because this has been running for a while now. And as we know, R20 is AVX and pretty hefty to say the least. So still running, still holding. And I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a touch test to see if it's warm, because this is clearly highly scientific to my thermally trained fingertips. And yeah, that's completely fine. It can feel a little bit warm around this hinge, but I guess that's more specific to the uh, Dell design as opposed to just the 10th gen uh, ecosystem. That's fine, I can't. Yeah, so there's, should I put the microphone there for the noise actually, I guess. So as far as noise goes, uh, in a, I wouldn't call this a loud environment, but a somewhat audible environment, uh, yeah, it's pretty much inaudible. In a quiet office or in a work from home office, it might be slightly different, but it's far from obtrusive to say the least. And that's still clocking away at 2.6 gigahertz. I'm actually genuinely quite impressed by that. Okay, so I'm used to running this on a, a Ryzen 9 3900X. So trying to fill the space it takes for the benchmark to run with words. Clearly not going very well. I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna, oh, it's touch screen. There you go, that's great. I think this is actually, I believe, a 3840 by, what would it be, uh, by not 2160, by I guess 2400, because it's a 16 by 10 touch screen, I believe. Uh, unless that's not in, nope, that's not in this model. 1920 by 1200 for this model, but still 16 by 10, which I know quite a lot of people like for work usage. Aha, so there we have 1,612 points in Cinebench R20. And we've just run that just in front of you. Let's go back to Task Manager. We're clocking back down.